Hello, third graders. Today's math lesson is lesson 1-4. So you will need to make sure that you are on page six in your math journal. This is the page we'll be doing together in a little bit. Also, a paper you will need later is your rounding numbers homelink, homelink 1-4. This is what you will be doing later on your own, and this is the paper that you will need to submit to Google Classroom when you are done. Also, another helpful paper that I like for today's lesson is to have your number grid here, because this could be very helpful with rounding today. A few things that I want to go over with you, some of it will be review, is I want us to go over what an estimate is. An estimate is an answer that is close to an exact answer. So we get into the ballpark, as I like to call it. We're not exactly on the right answer, but it is a close to answer. And sometimes we call these numbers close but easier. So I wanna show you what that looks like. So say I have this problem, 42 plus 89. It's hard to do that in my head. So what I wanna do is pick close to numbers, close but easier. So 42, if I look on my number grid, there's 42. It's only two jumps away from 40. So I'm gonna change 42 to 40. And 89, let's look on our number grid. 89 is really close to 90. I like that number a lot better. So I'm gonna switch to 90. Now I have 40 plus 90, which is a little bit easier to add. And if I, I could write it up and down like this, because zero plus zero is zero, four plus nine is 13, it saves me a little time. Same thing, let's look at 74. Let's look, 74. Well, there's a couple different ways I could do this. 74 is only four hops away from 70, so let's do 70. And 27, if I look on my number grid again, is really close to 30. It's only three jumps away. So I'm gonna do 30 and 70 minus 30 is 40. And again, these are close but easier. They're numbers that are easier to add and subtract. And something to notice, they usually end in five or zero, which means we either, nice numbers that work for close but easier numbers, usually end in zeros and sometimes fives. Those are usually the nicest close but easier numbers to use. If you look at back at the examples, I used ones that are all tens. The way we're going to be focusing today with rounding or showing our rounding is with number lines. And it's important when rounding, it's usually easiest to use numbers that are the closest multiples of tens or one hundreds. So what that means is thinking tens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, or one hundreds, two hundreds, three hundreds, four hundreds. Like those, that's what we mean by multiples of tens or 100, counting by those numbers. So like this one, 100 minus 17, 101, super close to 100. That's a really nice number. And 17 is really close to 20. So 100 minus 20 is easier to solve. than 101 minus 17. Now, open number lines. 
That should sound familiar. You talked about it last year in second grade. So we're going to review how we use open number lines to show rounding. So first step is to draw a number line. And I would like you to be doing this with me on a piece of paper or your math whiteboard. So if you need to get those things, pause the video now and resume when you're back. We're going to try to show how best to round the number 54 today to the nearest 10. So I'm going to draw three lines, one at the beginning, one at the middle, one at the end, and then draw lines underneath each one to write my answer on. Let's look at the number grid to find 54. What is the tens that comes right before 54? It's 50. And what's the 10, group of 10, that comes right after 54? It's 60. So right there, I have my low and my high. Then I need to think, what is halfway between 50 and 60? So if I look back on my number line, I could figure that out. I just kind of go back at the same time and I see that 55 is halfway between 50 and 60. Now, remember our number was 54. Do you think, does 54 belong between 50 and 55? Or does it belong between 55 and 60? Well, I can look at my number chart again and see that 54 comes before 55. So I'm going to put 54 right there. So, which number would we add it or which number would we say it's closest to is it is 54 closest to 50 or to 60 I would say it is 50 I would like you to have another number draw a number num another number line on your whiteboard or on another piece of paper. Now let's say I want to round a big number. We're going to try a big number like 168 and we're going to round it to the nearest 10. So we're looking at the tens place here. Let's draw our three lines with spaces underneath each one to draw or to write a number. What digit is in the tens place? Well, it's six. So six here means 60. So which two multiples are, going to, are we going to use? Well, our low one is going to be 160. And what is 10 more than 160, 160? It's going to be 170 because we're doing nearest 10, not nearest 100. So we're not doing anything with the hundreds. They stay the same. What we're looking at is the tens and they can only be apart by 10. So what would you say is halfway between 160 and 170? If it's easier to think about this, think what is halfway between 60 and 70?
halfway between is 165. Now, let's look at our number, 168. Is it between 160 and 165? Or is it between 165 and 170? Well, I think 68 is higher than 65. So we're going to put it here. So now, which one is it closest to? 160 or 170? Our answer, it is the closest to 170. Let's do one more. This time, let's practice using hundreds. So the number we're going to practice rounding is 325 to the nearest 100. Let's draw our three lines. And let's make sure we know we are dealing with the hundreds. So if we're thinking on a number line, we need the two hundreds that are the closest. So think 325, what is right below that? If I go to the earlier hundred, it's gonna be 300, that comes right before. What is the next hundred that comes next? Add 100 onto 300, we get 400. Now, what is halfway between 300 and 400? If you said 350, you are correct. Now, where would I put 325? Would it go between 300 and 350 or between 350 and 400? If you said between 300 and 350, you are correct. 325 goes between 300 and 350, which means that if I'm rounding 325 to the nearest 100, I have to go with 300. Let's look at what we're going to be doing in our math journal today on page six. So again, they've given you an example of what we're going to be doing today. They've already drawn your number lines. So let's look at number one. Round each number. Show your work on an open number line. What is 47 rounded to the nearest 10? So again, let's look on our number line. Here's 47. What is the 10 that comes before 47. If I go back on my number grid, I see that it is 40. And if I go to the next 10 up from 47, it is 50. Again, using the number grid when you can. This is a helpful tool. What is halfway between 40 and 50? It is 45. So, would 47 fit between 40 and 45, or would it fit between 50 and 45? It would go somewhere between 45 and 50. So, which number am I going to pick? 50. Two, what is 72 rounded to the nearest 10? So 72 nearest 10. So if I look at 72 on my number grid, I see that the 10, the group of 10 that comes right before it is 70. I'm gonna write that down. If I look at my number grid again and look at the next 10 that comes after it, I get 80. I can also use my number grid to figure out what comes halfway, but hopefully you're sensing a pattern. So it needs to be 75.
Now, is 72 between 70 and 75, or is it between 75 and 80? It is between 70 and 75. So, because 72 is closest to the 70, it's going to be 70. Last one we'll do together. What is 234 rounded to the nearest 100? This one's different, we're looking at 100s. So, looking here, looking at the 100s, I see that it is two. So I'm gonna use 200 as my starting point. Always use the, the hundreds place that it gives you as your low hundreds. And then what is 100 more than that? 200 plus 100 equals 300. And then what is halfway between 200 and 300? Think what is half of 100? 50. So I'm gonna go with 250. Now, my number was 234. Am I going to put it between 200 and 250 or between 250 and 300? I think 34 is smaller than 50. So I'm going to put it somewhere between 200 and 250. And it is closest to 200. So I'm going to write that. If you look at numbers four and five, these are called try this, which means they're going to be a little step up higher than what we have been doing for practice. So these may be a little bit more of a challenge. Try this means do your best. It's not graded, but I want you to try to see if you how you do with these. Okay? Don't forget that the blue home link 1-4 called rounding numbers is the paper that you're going to do for homework and upload to Google Classroom. I will see you guys at office hours.